Oh, kit heads, we are talking kits, the home of the greatest football kit content in the world. Yeah, I said it. I don't care who knows it. We are the greatest. I am Double A, obviously, and yeah, we're here for another amazing episode of Desert Island Kits. This is where we sit down with the, some of the amazing people from the football kit community, and we try and get them to narrow down five shirts from their own collection that they would take away to a desert island with them. Yes, it is a very unique format. No one has ever used it before. I've heard people saying, oh, this is desert island this. I don't even know what that is. I'm too young for that. I don't know. This is a unique idea. It's all about football kits. Just let us run with it. That's what it is. So we've got another amazing person. But before we introduce them and get into this week's episode, what I need you to do is stop what you're doing and just like the video. It's very important that you like the video. Uh, good for the algorithm, good for us, helps us grow, helps us become the biggest and the best. So yeah, smash a like on the video. If it's your first time talking kit, maybe it's not, make sure that you also subscribe to the channel. We are steadily growing, but we need to be bigger. We're not big enough yet. So yeah, subscribe to the channel. Also, don't forget to hit the bell notification button for every time that we drop content twice a week now, Desert Island kits as well as full kit rankers. So you shouldn't be missing anything that we are dropping and that's going to help you every time that we upload. You'll see it on your phone. That's what it's all about. So, yeah, let's get into this week's episode. Someone that's been on the channel before. He was on an episode of Full Kit Rankers ages and ages ago. I think it was our Cristiano Ronaldo episode, I think, celebrating 700 goals or something crazy like that uh, over a year ago, I think now it was. So, it's good to have him back. It is Paul from Football Kit Box. How's it going, Paul? How are you doing? Good, good, good. Thanks for having me on for my annual appearance. I love it. <laughs> well, hopefully it's not too much longer. I, you know what? We've been trying to get you back on the channel, but I think schedules haven't worked. We've tried to get you back on full kit yeah, rankers. I know okay. we've been in the DMs okay, a little bit. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough going. You have a, a big list of uh, the kit VIPs lining up to try and get <laughs> on your show. So uh, I'm glad I got uh, a golden ticket. So thanks for having me. Oh, mate, it's a pleasure as all, man, obviously. It's nice to see people want to come back on. That's the biggest compliment for us. Uh, you know, not having one appearance like I'm not going back on there again. So the fact you want to come back on, it, it means a lot to us, let me tell you. So, Desert Island kits then. I've had to uh, get you to narrow down five shirts uh, from your collection. How how tough has it been for you? To do uh, next near impossible. Next near impossible. I have a little cheat code here. I said I'd put five of them I didn't pick and wear another one. So, I sort of <laughs> cheekily picked 11, uh, which is, I know, cheating. And uh, I might get me barred from the channel. But uh, I couldn't. It's been really, really tough. It's like picking a favorite child. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it, was, it was tough. I like the fact you brought some honorable mentions, mate. It's always nice to see the ones that maybe just missed out. Because people in the comments might tell you, how was that missed out? Paul how have you not added that in so just run through some of the ones behind and, and that you're wearing that why, well, this why one, okay well this one first uh I think is even better than the 2008 one I or 2018 I think this one's gonna uh, maybe stand the test of time uh, I love what Nike and and uh, Nigeria have been doing the last few years yeah. and yeah. this is one of my go-to shirts I can just wear it out and about and I just I just love it. I love the geometric patterns, love the colorway. It's just, it's a banging, banging yeah. shirt. The Snowflake one, um, none of, uh, I have a good few Man United kits and none of them made my final five, which I thought was really weird. Um, I think it's because they're maybe not as exclusive or not as rare, maybe, you know, yeah. lots of other people have them. And so if, if, if it was a case I had to sacrifice them, I, I could kind of say, oh, I will get them again. <laughs> um, I did only get the Snowflake one, uh, relatively recent well maybe a couple of years ago now and i'd always wanted that as a kid so that's yeah if you put a gun to my head that's probably my my favorite kind of man united shirt the ireland 194 the finest ever irish performance uh paul mcgrath giant stadium had roberto baggio in his pocket mm -hmm. ray helton scored a shinner and um new york just went crazy ireland went crazy it was one of our best ever kind of international results and it was uh it was i suppose the pinnacle maybe of the jack charlton era everything sort of maybe went downhill maybe after that providence city uh hot club shirt 
Um, really, really good, really different, uh, really unusual. I don't think there's ever been a beige football shirt, uh, you know, uh, and it just works really well. The collar, it's just, uh, you know, Providence City awesome. just do really, really good kits, really good design, and they're at the forefront of kind of lower league stuff in uh, in in America. And this is that was just wow. groundbreaking for me. Yeah, yeah. Celtic eighty nine. I keep I'm on, on the opposite side. <laughs> Celtic eighty nine ninety one or eighty nine to ninety away. Again, another shirt that I only relatively recently got, and I loved as a child. I had actually the goalkeeper shirt from the time, and uh, probably one of the best Celtic away shirts of all time. True classic. And then the Fall River Marksman, uh, one of the most popular shirt uh, in the in the Kipbox Monkey Club, and um, we did uh, we featured them. Brilliant club. They're 100 years old. They, they were the Harlem Globe Trotters 100 years ago uh, in the 1920s in America. Like just won leagues and cups all over. And then they folded in 1930, 1931, and just were wiped off the face of the planet. The Great Depression knocked all the soccer industry back 50, 60 years in America. Yeah. People don't realize how big soccer was back then. They, club came back in 2019 a revival club and then icarus who are one of the best brands uh, at yeah. the moment in terms of design they're just killing it. i love what they do the the some of the kits they're coming out with for the for the clubs around the world are just i think are brilliant yeah, really and they're cool. doing great making making great inroads in 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 the uk and i'd like to see them over here in ireland but they did a great job with that kit i say every every episode but genuinely that they could be someone's fine. So yeah, yeah. that being said, I'm really interested to see if they've missed out what it is that you will be taking to a desert island then, Paul. So your first shirt that you want to show us, shirt number five, what is okay. it and why have you chosen it? Okay, so I am choosing Caversham United nice. 2019 2020 uh, kit. The first kit with football kit box on it, uh, which is lovely, obviously. And uh, it was the first time uh, Caversham United did a design competition. Um, Jack Vaness and uh, I had been talking to Caversham United when they were, you know, just had 50 followers on uh, Twitter and they were only, you know, a small kind of Sunday league team. They had uh, approached me about maybe helping them to get some kits. And then we kind of came up with the design um, competition idea. And the whole thing just kind of grew from them. And they just went on from strength to strength. They have nearly 20,000 followers now. They have followers all over the world. So, um it's mad. If I was on a desert island, I'd, uh, I'd uh, no doubt meet another goats fan there, you know. Uh, <laughs> and if not, I could set up the Caversham United uh, fan club on that island. It's a number of different reasons, I suppose, why it's why it's special for me. Yeah, there's a little bit of ego there, you know, because you know I, I work so hard to kind of to build oh. up my own company and to uh, to see it on a football shirt was was wow. uh, I suppose a, a a nice thing as a, as a football shirt fan. Uh, also, I'm a huge Kappa fan, and um, and the design itself. You don't get many navy kits really. There's not many clubs out there no. that use navy. So uh, everything about the shirt, I just thought looked really, really, really cool. Humble brag or not, you, you, like you say, you've worked so hard to get football kit box where it is. You, you got you've got to have the shirt with with your. Yeah, with, for sure. with your business on, that makes absolute sense. Top first shirt there for us. So, where are we moving on to next shirt number four out of your five? We are moving on to TUS Jollenbeck. <laughs> nice. We were number two. Oh, look at that 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 name set. That is a yeah, flocked black flocked uh, name set. The classic <laughs> Ipswich design, non-league team from. Bialen Field, kind of halfway between Dortmund and, and Hanover, yeah. I had another similar shirt that was too small for me. I, I got a batch of them in um, Flugenhaven or something like that, and it was too small for me. And then I ended up swapping that one with Ellis Platten. And um, oh. that one was too big on him, and the other one was too small for me. So, so we swapped them, and they were both long sleeve and both had collars. And obviously, as a kit collector, you you everybody aspires to having one of the Holland eighty eights, and um, just to have one and to see it up close in the flesh, and and to be able to wear. If I had a Holland eighty eight, I probably wouldn't wear it. Like it probably be in a glass case, <laughs> but I can wear that one, and it's beautiful. You know, it's it's a really, really, really cool uh, head head turning. Sure. Yeah. And actually, when I posted it online, when I got it, um, the club actually reached out to me oh, wow. and they were um, 
they had their 125 year anniversary last year as a sports club. Uh, yeah. We know these kind of amateur sports clubs in Germany that do a range of different sports. So they were having a 125 year anniversary and this guy, he was on the board or, uh, uh, you know, one of, one of the guys who helps kind of organize everything. And he was like, I used to play number two as well. And he was kind of going, <laughs> oh, was I playing at that time with those kids and, and that kind of stuff. I was starting a conversation with him and he didn't come back to me. So if you're watching this, uh, come back to me as well, <laughs> Tobias, um, because I, I, I was expecting that maybe, you know, he was going to uh, yeah, ask me to, you know, you know, to re-donate it back to the club or something yeah. like that. Uh, and if that is the case, I'm going to be looking for another Ipswich. So can any <laughs> of your fans or your followers uh, maybe um, get get in touch? Uh, I'm looking for some, uh, I might be looking for a replacement. And if you are Tobias from uh, TUS, Yolenbeck, um, get back in touch, answer the email, and uh, I, I can uh, certainly uh, help organise, get that back to you. Two shirts down then. Um, let's move on to number three and, and what shirt are you going for next mate so again I love the garish I love the bright I love the bold uh, and and the infamous as well so we have 97 98 away Ireland away kit which was made infamous in a number of different ways it's gorgeous I don't think many people liked it at the time you know I think it was quite marmitey and was quite it was our first time we'd ever had an orange kit which is weird because it's a third of the flag but I suppose it has a lot of political maybe connotations or something like that yeah. so um the night before the official launch the biggest non-cash and jewelry heist happened in the Umbo factory allegedly in case there, anybody is watching, uh, the INLA um, uh, broke in to the Umbro factory and cleaned out over a million euros worth of kit. Um, wow. Man United, Liverpool, Celtic, tracksuits, training tops. They reversed two juggernauts, you know, the, the, the big sort of trucks in. Uh, they somehow distracted. The, the, there was an accountant in there. They threw stones up at the window and, and pretended to be the security guard and said, oh, we need, the kettle's broken. Can you open the door? He came down. They kidnapped him or tied him up. They reversed two stolen trucks into the warehouse, closed the warehouse and spent the whole night in the warehouse with the forklift. Even the guy from Umbro said, you know, that if he ever found him, he'd give him a job because uh, <laughs> they, they had loaded these trucks so quickly <laughs> and they stole over a million euros worth of uh, kit overnight, of which was the new orange oh, and uh, the INLA. <laughs> and and the, the, the story at the time was, uh, you know, that they weren't happy, obviously, that the, the kit was going to be orange mm -hmm. and that there was undertones of... Um, you know, uh, a patriotic uh, sort of element to it, but I think it was just opportunism and something like that was obviously planned, you know, a, a, a yeah. long time in advance. Instantly, it was an instant classic and an instant memorable sort of shirt as a result. Absolutely. And uh, and uh, definitely it made it even rarer, you know, because um, because obviously there was less of them around. And then we went and had a, a Macedonia, which is entered the lexicon of Irish soccer history because we went out to Macedonia in qualifying and uh, we Macedonia had never won a competitive game in six years uh, Alan McLaughlin put us in front and then Jason McAteer trigger who's not necessarily the sharpest bowling ball in the box no. sometimes no uh, he handled the ball inexplicably in the box I don't know how I uh, gave away a penalty and then Terry Phelan got the ball blasted at him and he was kind of protecting his face and another penalty was given against us and uh, then Ian Hart slipped or something like that and um, yeah we could not equalise we could not come back into the game we ended up losing a 3-2 uh, Keith O'Neill came on and then went off injured the substitute went off injured and then Jason McIntyre lost the head altogether. And I don't have you ever seen this? I've, His, I've not. I'm gonna go on YouTube now, though. I'm gonna oh, check it out. Oh man, it, 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 he would put Eric Cantona to shame. You're talking Jackie Chan stuff here. Oh, like he, nice. he absolutely poleaxed um, a Macedonian fella in the last couple of minutes for a straight red card, like flying kick, reckless tackle. Uh, got sent off from that day onwards. Uh, when the Irish team trained, whoever has the worst day has has to wear a yellow bib and it's called having a Macedonia 
uh, so the worst <laughs> trainer is uh, is uh, is is reminded of that infamous uh, day, and we didn't. As a result, we didn't qualify for France '98. Mate, I mean, I was expecting stories on kits. I wasn't expecting the the greatest, biggest heist <laughs> in <laughs> history <laughs> to be included. I person, I personally absolutely love that shirt. I love that template as well. You know, you think of those being United fans, those United kits of, of, of that time as well. I think there was an Ajax away that was a blue away shirt around that time that was really Maybe, yeah. fantastic mm. as well as I think Inter was still still using that template as well. The only, the only thing I remember about it, I had the United ones, was the arms obviously would just seem dead flappy and it looked like it on them when you pulled it out. The arms were dead, like, almost like paper and straight, yeah. like an arrow. But it's, it's a beautiful shirt and I, I would like to see Ireland... Go back to orange, maybe. Maybe Castor can surprise everyone. Throw out a little <laughs> orange number similar you to that. And you'll, you'll be on it, mate. And if I'm on a desert island, I I, I think a bright orange shirt is a good idea as well. You're going to be seen, mate. Absolutely. Yeah, Another amazing pick, I have to say. Let's get into shirt number two on your list. We're doing a great reveal. I mean... <laughs> Nothing to be said, mate. Nothing, there's literally nothing to be said. If you're watching it, you know exactly what it is. So, VFL Bochum, um, yeah. 98, 99. Match worn, signed, mate. long sleeve, embroidered crest, embroidered sponsor. Have you ever yeah. heard the like? <laughs> um, kit manufacturer on the label I've, I've always heard faber uh were more of a kind of a cycling brand um yeah. I, I i didn't i have much experience of them uh in a in with football, football. kits mm -hmm. and certainly having it on the on the collar i've never seen another uh, manufacturer do that yeah um mm -hmm. and then the back uh emir zavich uh if you, it kind of sounds like savage and in ireland you know when something's really good it's savage i don't know do you have that over there <laughs> Yeah, um, <laughs> you use that, do you? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, when something's really good, it's savage, you know. So, savage, savage kind of sounds the same. He was, um, a Slovenian, um, kind of journeyman, uh, footballer. He played most of the time in, in the Slovenian league, uh, but yeah. he, he did a, a short stint with, um, Bochum and uh, a couple of games from Mainz as well, yeah. uh, and a half season in Croatia. Um, he only played, uh, maybe eight, nine, ten times for, for, for Bochum. And he only scored one goal in his career against Kaiserslautern. So I don't have any COA on this. So no. I don't actually know. Uh, but I, I'm just, I, I believe it was at that game. Like, why would you sign oh. a shirt unless you scored the goal? Like, that yeah. Day, right? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That, that's my thinking, uh, and <laughs> and I'm sticking to that. Yeah, it's just a cracking shirt. A cracking yeah. shirt with a with a just really really well put together. And I I, I wonder, I kind of wonder in a lot of the shirts. You know, you were talking about your Ajax shirt there the other day, and I wonder will a lot of the shirts today last thirty or forty years the way that some of the 90s ones are you know although they were probably impractical to play with and you know a, a little bit different they were made to last you know they got one probably for the season whereas yeah. the premier league now they have two per match you know what i mean yeah. so um it's all about performance and you know sweat wicking and you know all this kind of stuff so i wonder i wonder where my kids have 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 jerseys up today in, in 40 years time i'm not so sure mate again you really are knocking them out of the park this week. This this is a an immense five so far. So we've got one I, more That's shirt. why it was so hard. That's why it was so hard. So you spoke there about, yeah, maybe bringing out uh, uh, another orange kit. But yeah. Did you not know that we had an orange kit last year? I didn't. Maybe I missed that. You call yourself part Irish. Oh, come on. <laughs> You're calling me out. I missed, I've missed that. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That is, that is nice. So yeah, the twenty twenty one away Ireland kit um, yeah. with patches because this was actually worn in qualifying by no right. other than Chiozzi Ogbeni with twenty on the back there. Match details there on a, uh, from the Luxembourg game in which wow. he scored the second goal 
of three. Ogbeni is, you know, the nation's darling at the moment. He's um he is such a great, honest player, you know. He won uh, man of the match uh, last night against France. He had an unbelievable performance, almost as much kind of defending as uh, as attacking. Uh lovely fella um has come up through the ranks in Cork. Limerick has gone over to Brentford, didn't really work out and then um Exeter and then, then he went to Rotherham and he's doing great stuff at Rotherham at the moment and I can see him working his way up um through the ranks and he hasn't had I don't think he's had a bad game for Ireland as well. Uh yeah. he was he scored against Lafayette last week. He was brilliant against uh France and to have an Ireland match worn shirt in which someone has scored a goal in a shirt that I wanted anyway and I waited because I, I was on a promise on someone and I was waiting for ages and I never thought it was going to happen. I, I had a good contact. And then to end up getting a shirt that is so you know iconic in its own right, uh, but obviously to be to be a little bit a part of history as well. Uh, it's, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And it goes way straight, straight to the top. That is honestly an amazing five shirts. I'm going to be really evil now and get a little bit more enjoyment from your pain. If all four are in the water, you've got one hand on a lifeboat, they're going to take you back home. You've got one hand spare. You can only pick one from the five. Which one are you reaching out for? Well, I'm a qualified swim coach, so I know how to turn a piece of clothing into a buoyancy aid uh, by pulling it over my head and tying a knot. So... (laughs) I could probably just let go of the lifeboat and maybe take a few of them, um, but no, it's got to be it's got to be the uh, yeah I've done I've done them in sequence. It's gonna be like yeah. Benet's actual shirt. Um, uh, yeah, I, I yeah, I, it, it's got it's got everything. It's, it ticks yeah. every single box that you 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 could be hoping for, um, and it's um, yeah, it's really special, mate. Brilliant. Thank you so much uh, for sharing some. Amazing, not only shirts, but amazing stories with each one as well. That's it's kind of what this is all about, really. It's not just about sh- seeing the pretty colours and the pretty patterns. It's about hearing about the amazing stories that go with each shirt. And the fact you've got an amazing story for every shirt is just, it's just fantastic. Before we let you go, there's another reason why you've come on the show as well. We want to make sure you get telling everyone about the kit con that's going on. Give you a platform just to tell everyone why they need to be out there and when it is and what's going on, I'll, I'll give you the floor just to tell us everything. Yeah, so this year we're doing the second ever KitCon era uh, on the 16th of April, uh, Sunday the 16th of April in the airport Carlton Hotel in Dublin. We have some of the best kit collections in the country amassed uh, in one place under one roof for one day. It's going to be, you know... Um, we ran it last year and this year it's going to be a little bit bigger, a little bit better. We have collections from uh, a lot of different League of Ireland clubs, um, special kind of match worn uh, Ireland shirts. Um, we have uh, a goalkeeper, uh, 1937 goalkeeper kit, actual oh, match worn wow. Ireland. Uh, we have um, an Arsenal collection, every single Arsenal shirt from 1982 bar one that wasn't commercially available. We have Newell's Old Boys. We have uh, the Fluminense um, Brazilian uh, community are going to be uh, displaying some kits. Mm-hmm. We have uh, Liverpool. We have Dortmund. We have um, kits from every different sort of League of Ireland clubs. You can imagine Galway, Finn Harps, you know. Um, we have all the best independent kit vendors. Um, NI Clasco is going to be there. Um, kit Launch is going to be there. And uh, onside jerseys, uh, Argentina football shirts, um, Soccer Cards United, uh, this huge sort of subsection of the community. Um, they're kindly uh, sponsoring the event for us. Uh, Icarus are going to be there uh, in person as well, uh, helping us um, to promote the event and coming on board uh, as sponsor as well. Nice. And we have loads of different um, more uh, vendors that are going to be there. And then we have uh, kit discussions and talks. So people are going to be talking about all different aspects uh, kit about the industry the ins and outs uh, the history side of it yeah come on down check it out you can uh, check out more at kickonera.com or at kickonera on socials make sure you're checking out not only the kickonera but obviously paul at football kitbox as well 
that's it for this episode of Desert Island Kits. It's been an amazing. It gets better and better every single time, I have to say. And I love these discussions with these amazing people from the football kit community. If it's your first time talking kit, don't forget to smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and also hit the bell notification for every time that we drop content on the channel. We'll be back soon with more. We'll see you on the next one. But as always, just make sure that you keep talking kit. Thank you.